Many thanks for joining us on the Value Chain TV News Update. My name is Chat Moses. And on the news update today, we begin with stories on tariffs. Minister of Communications, Innovations and Digital Economy, Boson, Tijani and Telecommunication Operators have maintained different positions on the proposed plan to increase tariff across all networks. The telecommunication operators are insisting that the hike in telecom tariff has become inevitable given the realities and outlook of the present economy, warning that the epileptic power supply situation might become the fate of the telecom industry if the government continues to block them from raising tariff. However, the minister maintained that the government does not see an increase as an option. Some Nigerians spoke to Value Chain TV on this development, the report. The situation is that we live in a society that there is no sincerity. All right, people are suffering. Uh, everybody has a bite of what is happening currently. And for me, it's not okay that prices, uh, tariffs are increased. It doesn't make any sense. Even what we are experiencing right now concerning power is such that even the NLC, see, out of the sincerity of what an average Nigeria is suffering, uh, of the I've written formally, all right, to uh, the, 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 the concerned people concerning the, the power now that it should be reverted. So what are we talking about? There is no, it's not, it's not feasible, all right. This the, the services right now, based on what we are being charged, the the, the, the telcos. We are not satisfied. An average Nigeria would tell you that that we are not. There is no satisfaction. All right. So it's not about increasing it. Increasing it will not solve our problem. They, 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 we really need to, to be sincere and look inwards, and then so that an average Nigeria should be able to have value for what they are spending. I think that's what we are, we are supposed. Even cons, even the, the, our leaders, all right, needs to really look into this matter and see that we are not doing well right now what needs to be done is for what we are giving out now to have value for it i think that's what is important for telco to increase their tariff now is like squeezing the nigerians the telecommunication sector is like another oil well for nigeria and uh, if you look at it everybody uses data with that mass of, uh, with, with that income from that sector, I don't think there'll be need for increase because the the, the profits they are making, it's 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 it's, it's you, you can't you can't you can't really you can't really tell exactly. But what are they doing with it? How are they supporting Nigeria with it? So increasing their tariff now is like you know squeezing Nigeria to the to the to the I don't know. <laughs> it's quite frustrating. It's going to be frustrating. I, I'm, t I'm telling you, students use data. They need it to do their assignment they needed to do a lot of things in school markets remain they need it for their transactions and then to also communicate and buy things every day if you increase it you're going to suffer nigerians this whole thing goes back it falls it falls back to the common man and nigerians are suffering so i don't think it's a good idea i don't think it's a good idea the federal government and the nigerian electricity regulatory commission nerc have been given up to may 12 to reverse the hike in electricity tariff to 65 naira per kilowatt hour or phase picketing of the commission's offices and that of electricity distribution companies discos nationwide president of the nigerian labor congress joe ajeru and his trade union congress counterpart festus osifo in a jointly signed letter demanded the restoration of the supremacy of the status governing the conduct of operators within electricity industry labor described the increase as a flagrant abuse of power and a clear violation of the trust bestowed upon the commission by the Nigerian people. Nigeria Labour Congress President Mr. Joe Ajeo has said that organized labor may increase the minimum wage demand for 615,000 naira if inflation, tariff, taxes, and rising cost of petrol and other economic challenges continue. NLC President Joe Ajero said this during a courtesy visit to the Sun Publishing Limited in Lagos. SA Ufoma has the details. Ajaro's remarks follows attempts by the labor unions and the federal government to negotiate a suitable wage structure amidst rising economic pressures. He expressed concerns over the government's slow response to inflation, which has eroded workers' purchasing power and the escalating cost of living stating that the government needed to act fast to address inflation 
and other variables escalating the nation's current economic challenges. While advocating for a substantial increase in the minimum wage, Ajairo stressed the importance of balancing the interests of both workers and employers to ensure sustainable economic growth. For Value Chain TV, Essay Ufuma reporting. The co-chair of the Governing Council of the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, NCDMB, and the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Gas, Honorable Ekperikbe Ekbo, has pledged commitment to support the board to achieve its mandate, which is key to meeting the economic aspirations. This was disclosed in a statement by the NCDMB Office of Corporate Communications when the minister received in audience the executive secretary of NCDMB, engineer Felix Omoshola Ube. The meeting provided an opportunity for the executive secretary and the board's top management to brief the minister on the agency's mandate, activities and initiatives. The managing director of Shell Nigeria Exploration and Company Limited, SNEPCO, Eloho Aiboni, has linked the outstanding performance of Bonga to effective leadership and cutting-edge technology. According to a communique issued by the company's media relations manager, Abimbola Asian Nelson, SNEPCO's media relations manager, Aboini at the 2024 Offshore Technology Conference in Austin, Texas, in U.S., said this. She noted that since coming on stream in November 2005, Bonga has maintained a track record of production that saw it achieve 1 billion barrel export on February 13 last year. She said this feat has been made possible through continuous improvement, integrated delivery and collaboration with partners and stakeholders. The House of Representatives has resolved to probe the ongoing 15 trillion Naira Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project. The House said it would set up an ad hoc committee which would investigate the project and submit a report within four weeks. The House also resolved to summon the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Latif Fagbemi, the Minister of Finance Wale Edu, and his works counterpart David Umahi to shed more light on the project. The Minister of Works has, however, defended the project, saying it followed due process. The 10-lane coastal road was designed to connect Lagos to Cross River, passing through Ogun, Ondo, Delta, Bayosa, Rivers and Akwaibom State, before culminating in Calabar, the Cross River State capital. And on stories relating to insecurity, the Cardona State Government has revealed plans to merge 359 schools due to in-seasoned bandit activities, abductions and kidnappings. This was disclosed by Governor Uba Sani at a stakeholders forum and training of the school's protection squad. The governor, who was represented by his chief of staff, Sani Kila, stated that the schools in vulnerable communities will be merged with those in safe locations to safeguard against bandit attacks. The launched school protection squad under the federal government's Safe School Initiative aims to secure school children, teachers from bandits and terrorist attacks. Value Chain TV spoke to some Nigerians to hear their opinion regarding this development. The report. I think that would be a good idea and the insecurity will be reduced. And the other thing, maybe you think that maybe the, the student may not like the distance. Maybe they can get the school box for them that can be bring them closer or this between the running. So that would be much easier. I think it's a good idea. Because of being the security in Kadna State and other places, I think if they are able to move them away from the place where um, the what's it called kidnapping is happening and all that so I feel it's a better way if they are able to provide like hostel for them where they can stay then go home during the weekend then they won't have to be going and coming every day I think that's better but going far back home is not really that safe 
I don't think the government should relocate children from rural area down to the urban city because not all the parents will be able to achieve that. Parents will not be able to transport their children down to the urban city. What the government should do is to channel the efforts to security challenges that they are encountering currently in Kaduna State. He shouldn't just take children from rural areas down to urban. Not all parents will be able to afford that. Please, what I suggest to the government of Kaduna State is to ensure that all these security challenges are being tackled once and for all to ensure security of these children because they are our future leaders. Moving on to this week's news commentary, the current agitations by public office holders and Nigerians at large over the recent directive of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to implement a 0.5% cybersecurity levy on online transactions has continued to spark reactions. Even the House of Representatives has joined in asking the nation's APES banks to halt the levy implementation process. This resolution followed a motion of urgent public impotence moved by minority leader of the House, Kingsley Chinda. In this report, Adalbi Ogwejofo shares different perspective to the issue. The report. The Central Bank of Nigeria at the start of the week ordered banks operating in the country to start charging a cybersecurity levy of 0.5% on online transactions. The CBN explained that the directive is in accordance with the recent amendment of the Cyber Crime Prohibition Prevention Amendment Act of 2024. The circular from the Apex Bank further disclosed that the implementation of the level would start two weeks after the announcement. The levy shall be deducted from the source of the transaction and remitted to the Central Bank of Nigeria by the financial institution. In the secular, failure to remit the levy attracts a fine of not less than 2% of the annual turnover of the defaulting business, among other penalties. However, this announcement by the CBN has been faced with more oppositions than acceptance. Nigerians lamented as this is an addition to the already existing transaction charges such as stamp duty, electronic levy and SMS charge. The House of Representatives asked the CBN to suspend its implementation following public outcry that has trailed it. The debate by the House of Reps was led by Mr. Kinsley Chinda, who said the Cybercrime Act was implemented wrongly by the CBN. He cited that Section 44 of the Act places the levy on telecommunications companies, internet service providers, banks, Nigerian Stock Exchange and other financial institutions and not bank customers. Also, few hours after it was announced, the Northern Elders Forum NEF, a prominent social cultural organization representing the interests of the NOT, strongly condemned the Apex Bank's decision to impose a levy on bank customers. Economic analysts argue that the new levy will discourage online transactions. Others say it is crucial for national security and economic infrastructure. Reacting to the development, the Nigerian Economic Summit Group said the newly introduced cyber security levy should be targeted at high net worth individuals. It added that the new levy could economically strain the aggregate demand and limit growth. According to the firm, the gross domestic product of the country could decline during the immediate policy implementation period. In the midst of this opposition stands the support of the Senate. The chairman of the Senate Committee on National Security and Intelligence, Senator Shehu Umar Buba, while addressing the controversy surrounding the proposed implementation of the cybersecurity levy by the CBN, noted that exemptions of the levy include salary payments, intra-account transfers, loan disbursement and repayment, and other financial transactions. The Senate said there was nothing wrong with the levy as both arms passed it into law and that it was not a means of punishing Nigerians. The fear of Nigerians is whether the majority, which seems to be against the levy, stands a chance of winning the debate. For Value Chain TV, Adalbi Ogwejo for reporting. And that's the end on the Value Chain TV news update. I am Chat Moses. Thanks for watching.